Guys, welcome to this bonus episode of Pop Kitchen. Today, we are going to be talking extensively about past lives. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk, I think I reviewed it last week. So if you haven't seen that review, please go and check it out. It's a spoiler-free review. Mm-hmm. But today, I was very excited to say that the film was very, very good. I did my best to try and not talk too much about the film. I think, I think so much enough, of yeah. it is to be discovered. And I hope you didn't feel like I was over talking about the film. But... I know you've now seen it. I have. I'm and desperate to talk about details of the plot with yeah. you and unpack some of the ideas. Sorry, you were going to say? No, I was just going to say, as have many listeners and followers as well, and we yes. had a really great reaction to your review. We could put a clip out and loads of people outpoured their love yeah. for this film. And uh, uh, loads of people sent in their opinions now that they're getting a chance to see it. So I thought today, I'll just reiterate what Past Lives is in case you don't know, mm-hmm. and we're going to talk about some spoiler thoughts. So it. Past Lives, directed by Celine Song, is a Korean film set originally in Seoul with these two young kids called Sung and Nora who are very much in love but very much too young to properly be in love but before they can really blossom whatever's going on between them uh, Nora's parents emigrate I think to Canada they originally Canada, and then yeah. eventually to the to she finds herself in the United States as a playwright writer this is uh, very heavily based on a dynamic that existed in Celine Song the director's life mm-hmm. and she's written about this in a very personal way uh, she then reconnects with uh, Sung on Facebook and they have these sort of very 2010 style Skype things where they're catching up and sort of realizing that they kind of used to know each other and they realize it was very deep connection but it gets a little bit too much and they decide to just stop because they realize because of their studies no one's really going to move everyone's sort of stuck on the other side of the world and we cut another 10 or 8 to 10 years in the future again to Mm. modern day and Sung has decided that he's going to go to New York to see Nora, Mm. to visit her. He's going to America for the first time, by which point Nora has her own husband, she has her own life, she's a writer, and there's this sort of weird long-term tension that's been built up between these two people. And I purposefully mostly left out when I originally talked the film about the whole dynamic to do with the boyfriend. Yeah, I think think that's right. And I think that was where, I, I think, you know what, in a lesser movie, the film would have done something really simple and different with that boyfriend dynamic. Mm. And, and uh, which he even talks about. Which he even talks about. And I think I, one of the things I, mean, I will ask you what you thought in a sec. One of the things I mentioned in my review is that I think the film was very self aware of any like cheesiness it mm. was it relying on and mm. it was indulging in any corniness. Um, but yeah, lots of people have loved it. I really enjoyed it. George, how did you get on with past lives? I, I, I'm very thrilled to say I also thought it was fantastic. I really, really loved it. I, I got to the end and I shed two single tears. And I, and I said to Anna... With Nora. Yeah, with Nora. Well, no, she's sobbing, isn't it, by the end. But I said to Anna... We started to say that it was sad, but what I loved about it, Past Lives is that it's not as uh, simple as that. And, no. and, and, and like all of the best films it's emotionally complex and you can't actually reduce it to a single, single emotion. It's hard to put your finger on what's yeah. making you sad. And I think what it is- Like is that, nostalgia in a way too. Yeah, and that's quite profound. I think really, you know, some films deliberately aim to be, to be quite simple and plain in their emotions, which is absolutely fine. They exist, yeah. that's what like the kind of escapist films for. There's nothing wrong with that. What is harder to do, and that's why less films, do, fewer films do it, is uh, to go for emotional complexity mm. because it's more specific and it's harder to pull off. But if you pull it off, you really reap much better, deeper rewards. Um, it's why I like films like the Before Trilogy yeah. because you will come away with a sense of, mm, I have so many conflicted feelings about or multitude of feelings about uh, this thing that um, it's it's really rewarding. It also rewards the fact as the older you get, the more complex and, and emotionally complex your life becomes. Yeah. And so it kind of rewards you your uh, attuitiveness to that. Um, What I loved about Past Lives was, first of all, you spoke brilliantly about how much you love the film. One thing I think you probably didn't mention, and that's because you just probably too busy talking about other stuff, is how beautiful it it was shot. Everything seemed to be shot at dusk or dawn, Mm. uh, twilight, this kind of strange time of day. I mean, that's not exclusively that. There are daytimes and nighttimes scenes in it. But like- it Shoots New York beautifully. It shoots, it shoots the world beautifully. And, it, and it, you know, you have to, and, it, and using film is such, it, I think it's shot on film. Yeah. It's, like, it, it's such a clever device because I think film, the tactile quality of film is so much about nostalgia mm. that you can't quite get in digital. Um, I, for me, well, the thing that stood out for me is that I very much, uh, on the surface level, yes, you absolutely can experience this film as a kind of romantic story mm. about, uh, you know, a, a man and a woman separated, longing, 
a will they won't they tension but i think that is really really only the 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 first tier of the film and i think what mm. the greater depth to it is a whole thing about immigration and the immigrant experience and exactly. cultural dislocation which you touched upon in your yeah. review and the the key scene in this film for me is when um when hey sung has visited new york and she's seen him for the first time yeah. and then she's in bed with her husband and they're having this conversation and he, you know she, he says that like, you dream in korean mm. and i and because she, she says i don't really speak korean anymore and she, he says but you dream in korean and, I, such a good line. and it's like i don't there's a whole part of you that i will never understand and can't understand and there's a tapped away and i was realizing that what this film is getting at is is about um how much of your identity is lost and killed and dies mm. um uh it, it, when you remove yourself from a culture and move to another one and like hey sung in this film is a living embodiment of a life that she could never have uh, has never had and, and could never be but is still still exists and is still there yeah. and it's like i kind of thought there was a very subtle um thematic horror element to it in that hey sung is like a ghostly presence in her life she yeah. kind of he kind of haunts her he is the like i said the living manifestation of of all of her aspirations and dreams and everything that could have happened something could that be. was lost from like a butterfly effect from moving and the fact that he's not someone she had a history with she's someone that she, she could have had a history yeah, with and, and that's clear yeah and that's that's the that's the the real tentative potential of him it's not that they have this sort of um oh my god yeah he was this guy that i had this huge thing with in career it's no it's this guy i could have had but because i moved because of my because i emigrated mm. that created which that, wasn't her choice either which wasn't her choice um, and and really the whole film is about grief actually mm. and the final line the whole last exchange with them when they get in the uber is is brilliant but when that whole line when he says about um you know i guess i'll see you in the next one you know mm. the next life, next life is very much how people talk about death yeah it's very much how people talk about an afterlife and, and, and you know obviously this film talks about past lives literally yeah um and it made me realize that the whole film is kind of about grieving for yourself and grieving for your identity and grieving for a part of you that it is just lost in social dislocation in cultural dislocation yeah nora has gained so much about what what um, in her new life but she'll never be able to cover that wound and that that cry at the end when she just collapses yeah. on the steps that's a, it's 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 a little bit cathartic yes it's, it's like a relief the tension is so yeah. high at that point i was you know that long silence yeah i was holding my breath watching them like tennis like yeah. my eyes going left right but that cry it's it's not just a cry because nothing's actually really happened no. it's a cry for what could have happened i also or, think like you said a, a yeah. death of something that never was i think it's also it's her letting go yeah she's it's this That's kind done. of relief not relief but it's cathartic it's like it's letting go it's the kind of cry someone does when they've after the, after they've buried a loved one, because the easy the easier film to make is they realise they're actually meant to be the yeah. boyfriend's a schmuck, yeah, exactly. and he's actually really horrible in oh, a lot of ways. Yeah, he would he would have been a complete arsehole. And like, yeah. hey, Sung's the real guy, and they're going to run off into the distance together. But not no. doing that is so much more interesting. I, exactly. And we'll get, I will get onto this later, but it really complex. assesses the idea of what is a successful relationship, what is a comfortable relationship, yeah. what makes one better than the other. Yeah. Is a relationship that's actually just okay enough. Yeah. Is it very easy to be in your relationship in this comfort? Yeah. Look over the other side and say, well, would that, the would I be greener. happier? And you're right. What, what, what matters in a relationship? And when they talk about that in that, in that scene when they're in bed, when she mm. says, you know, oh, I, we, we, we were both writers and I ended up with you. And then we, because her husband's very yeah, cynical very about it. Of fact, but, yeah. Well, hang on. Yeah. You know, we, we got together. And also we know, I don't know if the husband knows, but we know that she got with him just after breaking up in inverted commas. Yeah. With Hey Sung, so there's a sort of an emotional, there's a causal effect between. Not allowed yourself moments to sort of be be outside. Well, exactly. That, really, so, yeah. But there's a causal relationship between Hey Sung and the husband in mm. that her emotional response to break to not talking to him to breaking off contact, then plants itself in the writers' retreat. I think that, um, yeah, it, it's it's that idea of of um, grieving. But all the 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 scene with the Uber. What I also realised is the scene, the moment between. She's walked him down the road and they wait and he's like, it's going to be like two minutes and they kind of sort of linger and stare at each other. And what that scene for me was like, this whole film has been talking about how people have come and gone and the movement of people and the sort of missing ships in the night uh, passage and movement of people, you know, in people's lives. And it's like these two are only able to find a connection in that moment because it is basically a liminal space. It yeah. is a 
time bubble because in that moment they are neither staying nor going if there's something about that time period when you're waiting for an uber when you're waiting for they've left the flat you just have that precise right amount of exactly. conversation time. And so that so that it could even be 30 seconds when they sort of stare at each other and are on that curb mm. is their moment and it is because it's suspended it's two minutes this, left because you know that that's it yeah it's suspended in this time bubble and that's how, how they can exist out they could only exist outside of time mm. but because but then obviously the, the spell is broken and, and then they're back down to reality and, and there's that moment right before where they go up to the flat and uh nora says i'm just gonna go wait yeah. for his uber and there's like again it's so underplayed but you can tell the husband kind of know knows that he's been around the whole time they need to have a private moment yeah. and i felt like the entire night in that whole exchange there's no bullshit. Everyone knows the dynamic that's going on. The husband is hyper aware of it, even yeah. though he can't understand what they're saying most of yeah. the time. He knows how intense and, and yeah. all the exchanges. Nora feels exactly how we all know she feels. Hey, Sung is madly yeah. in love with her. Everyone knows it, but yeah. no one says it. And it's like, yeah, I'm just going to let this yeah. play out. And when she cries, she doesn't have to explain why she's upset. Yeah. Everyone knows why she's upset. The but, husband knows. But it's nice that he's on the steps waiting for her. Yes, that's it? the thing. It's not, it'd be too easy to be like, oh, he's just like, you babe, you're hanging yeah. out with this guy. No. Because he does understand and they do love each other. But like, yeah, he, he, it's him being able to support a part of her that he doesn't know. I think that um, all the scenes in the bar... Great opening scene, very really theatrical yeah. about you, taking an outsider's perspective, like a Greek chorus looking and talking yeah, about. Yeah, so wide of the three of them and a voice would be like, I wonder who they... Yeah, like, who they are, think, the people watchers. Yeah, the people watchers. Do you think he's like... I think they're, they're brother and sister, sister, yeah, brother and, yeah, sister and they're yeah. coming over. And, and then that frame is then duplicated for that scene but, later in the yeah, film. Yeah, and you see that couple... And it Eddie starts with a wide, and there's this dynamic of if you've seen the film, you know, where obviously the boyfriend doesn't speak. I assume you have Korean. seen the film because it's a spoiler, spoiler, spoiler territory. <laughs> the, the husband is, is doesn't speak Korean, but the two of them do. And there's this, there's this barely an attempt at the beginning to cross translate through yeah. Nora that doesn't last long. And the boyfriend is so quickly framed out of that yeah. conversation. It even like starts to go around, and the use of color and red between one side yeah. that wasn't there in the first time. It's just, I think yeah. also it's, it's, it's really tense and that whole scene is very tense yeah. because I, they deliberately cut to John Magaro, uh, Arthur, sorry, the character Arthur, and him sort of listening to this conversation and being sort of drawn out of it. And it's a really tense setup. But then I love it when, uh, you know, Nora's clearly gone to the bathroom or something and it's just the two of them there. So awkward. But, aw but awkward, but also like... Not nasty. Not nasty. No. Because Arthur says it's really nice that you guys can do this. Yeah. Because he understands, you know, don't forget Arthur has learned a bit of Korean. They've yeah. just visited her parents, so he cares enough to realize that, you know, you have a, you know, you have a right to speak to this connection to your past. Um, because again, it's about grief. He, he understands this represents a part of her life that is that has died. Um, mm. Also, that thing about his son being like a ghostly presence. It was so sad. His whole appearance in New York in this sort of nondescript barren hotel room yeah you know, that's completely drab and devoid of any detail and color and he you know sits on his own having coffee and a sandwich in the, oh, hotel, yeah, in the hotel, lobby hotel lobby because he's just there to see her and he's he's also been unable to not think about her for his entire life yeah and you can just tell he's been hyper fixated on as soon as i can go to new york yeah i will go and see her also, the it was not lost on me that the of course they have a little day out with each other where they go to see the Statue of Liberty, yeah, which Dumbo. is of course Ellis Island, which is of course the center of immigration. Of course, yeah, I immigration into the US. That. that was the whole thing, and yeah. that's why later when he when she's like, "Wait, well, we've never been to Ellis Island together. We've never been to the Statue of Liberty," mm. and I was like, "That's kind of like a very under, understated kind of play on the fact that they have the her and Hayseung will have this kind of uh, connection, even though you know Hayseung and Arthur aren't immigrants." Mm. Nora is and yeah. she's got to play this constant ping pong match between the two of them and um, yeah I, I I think it was just uh, really really detailed and deep and I think I've got basically I've got some messages from my friend who I might who by the, he might be listening to this by the time this comes out and who thought it was kind of mid on the film, right? right? And he was like, ah, oh, you know, I don't, I don't think you needed the stuff at the beginning. And I, like, I don't think, you know, I, th I thought it was kind of just a standard. Will they? Won't they? And I'm like, uh, no, <laughs> uh, no. It's much deeper than that, and it has much. The more film to it. the film really kicks in in the third time frame. I think. Yeah, when, it really I, I, kicks into. I feel gear. like that is in a way you have like a kind of forty-five minute prologue, mm. and then you have the kind of main center of the drama, the middle bit where they're, you know 
on the other sides of the park and they're both studying. It reminded me of that that awkward period in normal people yes. when one of them is doing, I think, um, I can't remember. Yeah, Marianne's, in, Marianne's, Marianne's in Sweden, I think. Doing like these really sort of lonely post-grad masters and PhDs. Got where like abusive re- boyfriend. got a horrible boyfriend, but like there was something really well captured about the types of living that sort of master students have, which yeah. there's nothing technically wrong with it, but it's very like drab and functional. And not all of your friends stayed on to do like their second master's or their PhD. Yeah. It's actually a very, can be a very yeah. lonely and isolating experience. And you're sort of clinging onto this relationship, watching someone else mm. study. You're very stressed. You don't know what you're meant to be doing with your life. Yeah. And I always thought that sense of like, uh, sometimes studying can feel, uh, especially later on, can feel like a moment in stasis. Yeah. Where you're not quite actually fully realized what you want to do. You've not quite gone into the real world yet. Yeah. And I always think that's an interesting thing to capture on. I am, and what you said in the review about the suspension of lines and dialogue. Oh, yeah. In that scene again, I just think it's such a brilliant scene of dialogue of in the bedroom when they're talking, that having that pillow talk between her and Arthur. Yeah. You know, this is I, I like a film where someone will say something and you are given time where you see Nora listen to the words, process, process the words, think about her response, and then, and then say her response. Yeah. And like that also makes you as an audience lean in more, and more, much more considerate. Like you consider you what, we, and like you really put in like, what would I do if my partner told yeah. that to me? Give me, give it, give it space, and give you time to think and engage with it. Um, and into the point where it just doesn't give you any dialogue at all, and you're yeah, just, yeah, and, like, yeah. and it just lets all, it lets me do all the work, and I'm exploding yeah. on the inside. And then she cries, I cry, also, and like there are little sort of like tangible things. Like he says, she says, oh, you know, we came to Korea, and we email, I emailed you, and he's like, oh yeah, and like they never touch on it again. But it's just clear that like he was not in a place where he wanted to yeah. talk to her. Um, I also think that um, the, I read this in a, in a review somewhere that was like, it's called past lives, but the way it appears on screen is two, dis- two distinct concepts as past and lives. Sure. Do you see that when it appears on screen, it's past lives. Yeah. And it is like this collision of, um, of, of these two concepts and the jump cuts towards the end, you know, when they're, they're like, when they're about to say goodbye to the Uber and it cuts to the stairs. Yeah. yeah. The separating of paths. Yeah, and you realize, but there, and it's like it made you realize, oh, the relationship has been dead. I really like, died. died then. Yeah, and it's yeah. like you need to let go. It's a film yeah. about letting. That's it. It's a film about grieving. You and need the whole to let Indian go. thing is that maybe our souls are destined for each other, and maybe in another life yeah. they will find each other. Yeah. But me and you Not will never time. know. We will yeah. never experience it. But you just you sit there hoping in quiet, sad desperation that maybe in another world yeah. our souls reincarnated will be together. I it's mean, it's I really it was, sad. I thought it was a, well, also because like it's clearly building. This tension is building towards this ending, and I thought that line and that ending about catch you in the next one is, yeah. is is a really nice ending. It's a really nice. We can leave you with hope. Flip. Depending on how you feel well, about I, 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 I did, that's the thing. I didn't find it a sad ending in a way. Yeah. It's emotionally complex. It's like but it's a closed book as well. You it's can't acceptance. breathe and sort of go. They've buried it. They've buried the it's ghost. Done. It's over. It's almost like, in a way, it's about trauma. The whole thing that happened, their relationship is not a relationship. It's a, it's a traumatic event. It's that they were ripped apart. It's, true. it's like post rationalizing. And what, it's and like what to they've leave. had to, this whole experience of them catching up with each other and seeing each other. Again, they this is the only time they, they, when he comes to New York. That's the first time they've seen each other in in the flesh. Yeah. And it's closure. It's not. It's not reuniting. To, mm. to win 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 her over and, and run away in the sunset, it's closure for a yeah. traumatic event that happened in the past. And I just thought it worked really well realized, again, I touched on my review, this idea of what it's that immigrant experience of yeah. leaving somewhere, being the only one in the new place, yes. obviously adopting a new culture and gaining so much from it. But along the way, you only realize what you've actually lost when you're confronted with someone you see from your old your old country yeah. and you're like, oh, I'm not them. Exactly. They're something else. And it reminds you that actually you're nowhere. Again, it's like looking very negative. But no, but, no, but, no, but that's, I, that's such an interesting way to tackle it that I don't think ex- really is picked up. Exactly. The that's the brilliance of the film. Sorry. It takes, it uses a romantic framework to ultimately make you realize how traumatic mm. the immigrant experience can be to your identity. Yeah. Or it's not even because some of it's better, like, it's shaped, but yeah, just fundamentally sh- sh- um, how much it sculpts you are, who you are, and, and traumatic as well. It's also something that it's a story that happens to these two characters in their 30s, like yeah. late 20s, early 30s. And it's like, it actually feels like a realization that someone 30 is older than them would have. Mm. feels like a post-divorce kids. Mm. I, it's, it's not, they've not actually lived that much of their lives. No. They're like at the start of their own journey, mm. becoming more realized adults. So I, it sounds like a story that you would hear people in their 60s talking about, can, meeting someone they once loved. Can I make a point as well? This isn't a comment about the film as well. I don't care about this. It's just something I sometimes observe <laughs> in films. I go, you know... She's never an accountant. 
She's always the, the, these characters. She's they're a writer. all like she's a theatre writer and her husband's a novelist. Yeah. I'm like, it's it's not a problem. But I've, I I mentioned it when I talked about that Julie Louis Dreyfus film, my slag doc. Yeah. Like, because you know, they're, they're not interesting even to the writers. Not, exactly. Because you know what? The writers were never accountants. Yeah. And they don't know what the fuck exactly. accountants do. It's like Chad LeBing. What is Chad LeBing doing exactly. for Exactly, data processing. No one knows. Well, um, and Lean Song, I know it's based off, like she worked in theater and she, and like, I get it. It's based off your life. Don't get me wrong. But like sometimes I just had a little chuckle to myself when it was like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a theater writer. I'm like, yeah, of course you are. Because you're in this film. Yeah. Any one of these films, they never do a boring job. No. You never work in, yeah, mid, mid, middle management. No. You're doing, except to Hey Sung. Hey Sung works in, well, he's an en- even engineering. It's kind of interesting but like yeah. um i also say like uh, it, it's it you can see the dna of the stage in that film but i thought yeah. what for a for a feature debut just so confidently using yeah. cinema to, I, don't know, I hope that doesn't sound uh, patronizing i just mean that like it was such an amazing first outing to make that jump from yeah. stage to cinema and to use cinematic language yeah. to evoke emotion i just thought was brilliant and like hello celine song I'll be checking out whatever's next. We did get some amazing emails from all of you who wrote in to hello at popkitchenpodcast.com and sent in your thoughts. Just like Amanda did, Amanda writes into the show and says in her email subject, more love for past lives. Hey, James and George, I'm so, so happy you made the time to go see this movie and discuss it on the pod. Amidst all the hype around Barbie and Oppenheimer, past lives managed to slip through so beautifully as my favorite film of the summer. I went into the cinema knowing it was going to be good, but not that it would knock me back in my seat like it did. I completely agree with what you said about the lines having space to breathe, so much so that in certain scenes, especially in the bar near the end, I felt that I couldn't breathe, lest I disturb the air between the two of them. Yeah, I think I said I didn't want to sneeze near yeah. the film unless it's like blows off the table. Um, it very much felt like a callback to my favorite line from Before Sunrise when Celine says to Jesse, Jesse, I believe if there is any kind of God, it wouldn't be in any of us, not in you or me, between. but just in the space in yeah, between. Absolutely. The themes of the movie, the dynamic between the two main characters and all that stuff left unsaid was so poignant, deeply affecting, and personal in ways that altered my mood and my thinking for weeks after seeing the film. I love it when a film does that. Yeah. That yeah. was me saying that. Uh, it's one of those films that I found almost painful to watch, but in the most beautiful, human, and cathartic way, as only art can do, yes. it captured and reflected things about myself and my relationships that I've never seen put into words quite like that. It's a little too soon to say, too soon to say, but I can see it making my making it. It's a little too soon to say, but I can see it making its way into my all-time favorite list. Mm. If I muster up the emotional courage to watch it again, LMAO. Uh, I could not speak more highly of the film, and I really hope more people get out there to see it. Thanks to everyone. Thanks for everything you guys do. Keep up the amazing work. Amanda from Toronto Brackets. Yet another long-time listener, first-time caller. And Toronto, where the... Toronto. Sort of Toronto. Um, we have a good con- Canadian contingent, actually. We do. I will we just do. say also that the um, because of the gaps between the dialogue mm. and the spacing... I, I, I watched it thinking I could easily watch this again. However emotionally traumatizing it, well, they're not traumatized, but how much, take, I could happily take on the burden of watching this again. I want to see it again with Talia. Because I could read, Talia didn't watch it with you. Well, no, no, I was. I said, why don't we watch Past Lives together? And then we moved our record date uh, and it came too soon. I was like, I really should see it. So I didn't tell her, but then I watched oh, it. Oh, you've got to watch and it And then again. I was like, I have actually seen it. But I was like, I'll see it again. I I'll think see I can see it again. The, uh, just, just to watch the detail and the, yeah. co- the 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 interactions it's meticulous I, I, absolutely i kind of creepily want to watch talia watch it a little bit as well you know yeah. what i mean like i want to see her process but it what's been nice i told some people to go watch it and somebody has and they sent me a gushing note as well saying mm. how much they they loved it which actually i could probably read out but i'm going to read first a note we've had from uh emily friend of the show oh best friend of the show what well, you about to say something though i was just going to say you know how we talked about last week when we do this film podcast, but someone's like, what's a good film that's out? I'm like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. I've been really nice to be like, past lives, yes. go and see past I have an lives. answer really to that question. It. Don't Google it, just go and see it. I think it's really great. So Emily says about past lives, she says, past lives has really stuck with me. I couldn't stop thinking about it on the drive home and, and all of today. I thought the concepts discussed were put so beautifully. I particularly liked when Nora and her husband were in bed and he said, I'm scared you're dreaming in a language I don't understand. Yeah. Emily, I thought the exact same thing, which can be interpreted in so many different ways. Like dreaming um, of a life, dreaming of everything. My only issue is I thought there was a slight lack of chemistry and sometimes awkward dialogue between Nora and, um, and Hei Sung. I didn't get the feeling they were being pulled together by an unknown force. Uh, unknown force may or may not have shed a tear. Well, I think that's deliberate. The lack of chemistry, it's not a lack of chemistry. There's it's an awkwardness. The awkward, there, there, it's, there's an awkwardness by the fact that they are, in a, in a way, strangers. Yeah. But they are, have this complete, pull, mag, they have this magnetic, strange interaction where even though their dialogue is very elliptical and kind of a little bit cul-de-sac-y because of their language 
barrier. And also culturally, like New Yorkers are very quick talking, yeah. fast, like this is that. Whereas like Korean culture typically might be more reserved, more polite, mm -hmm. more quiet. And you see that sort of like yeah. someone's torn between each one, especially in a different country, you'll find that. Uh, and I would just say that, um, uh, uh, I'm, just saying my, I'm just getting my friend Jess's uh, notes about it. She said, Past Lives, excellent film choice. Loved it. Very artistically shot. Genuine. A really great little film. Can't fault it, to be honest. It stood out massively from the crowd. And oh my God, that bit at the end where she burst into tears. So well made. Double thumbs up. Um, we also got an email from Freya who writes in and says, uh, past lives and the streaming saga continues. Me again, brackets, I wrote in a few months ago on what makes a movie rewatchable. Mm. I wasn't planning on writing back so soon, but I have thoughts and developments I'd like to share. A few days ago, my family and I watched past lives and we loved it. The whole film gave me the same feeling I get when I look through old photographs of my parents before I was born. Oh. A sort of nostalgia for a moment I wasn't part of. Do you guys feel the same way? I mean, yeah, I guess. Yeah, when totally. You see a whole life that you weren't part of, but mm. have a connection to. It's and like leaving thing. that, thinking about your own life and going, mm. yeah, like what, what do I think about that moment? Also, um, great Sharon Van Etten song used over the credits, which they kind of do in... Um, uh, it just reminded me of another A24 movie where, they, where uh, called Never Really, Sometimes Always, which also uses a Sharon Van Etten movie, um, Sharon Van Etten song at the end, and they just go, that's a great way of ending the movie, just get a Sharon Van Etten song in there, mm. and they did. So uh, I love that when that happened. Um, as my single tear rolled down my <laughs> cheek. Yeah. I also really like the way they captured like the shittiness of Skype from like 15 years ago. Do, 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 ba -da -boom, do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Well, there you go, guys. Those were our spoiler thoughts for Past Lives. If you had thoughts, we'll still be able to read them out in coming episodes. Please send them in to hello at popkitchenpodcast.com. Don't forget we post new episodes of Pop Kitchen every single Wednesday. 